Ever since I left Google a few months ago, I wanted to do two projects, which I couldn't do when I was still employed at Google. I mean, I mean, I could do them, but I didn't have the balls to do them. Um, yeah, the first project is what this this whole video is about, and it's basically me trying to implement a full game in Flutter in 10 minutes. And I mean, like, not 10 minutes of edited video, but 10 minutes straight from start to finish without using any editing, without using any um, the pre-existing code or anything like that, just just from like the counter app to a finished game in 10 minutes. Uh, so that's it's probably going to fail, but anyway, I'll try it. <laughs> uh, so I guess I can I can start. Let me start the timer and go. Hey, this is me from the future. I I realized that I couldn't actually talk while also building this game. Uh, so so instead I deferred to my future self to do the talking and the explaining. And so that's what I'm doing here, all right? So, so far I just replaced everything under the scaffold of this of this app, which is the, the usual app, with a row and in it there's an aspect ratio of one, which just makes sure that this will be a, uh, a square, right? And uh, in it, there's a grid view. So I'm still not tell telling you what this game is about, but it, it has a grid. It has a grid of nine fields um, by three, so three by three. And uh, so, and see, I, I have trouble actually writing code here, <laughs> like, like actually writing uh, characters, which uh, doesn't bode well for the, the whole experiment. Okay, so I have something there I just saved and therefore uh, there was a hot reload and so you can see over there on the left or right bottom corner that um, that I uh, that I have some some kind of grid there and uh, next to the aspect ratio uh, next to the square I have a column which is basically my status part of the game uh, which just says right now it just says your move and then there's an, a button, which again, I have trouble actually editing stuff <laughs> apparently. And uh, it just says restart, right? So it doesn't do anything yet. Also, uh, I don't want everything pressed so hard to the, to the top of the page. So a little bit of nicety is to put the main axis alignment to space around, which makes a little more move to, to each item in that list and also adding, um, putting everything into center. This, in this, I will not do a lot of uh, visual stuff, of course, I have only 10 minutes, but but still, it's it's nice. Uh, cool, I have, I have created the state of the game now, which is a list of uh, nine zeros at the start, uh, but it's going to always be a list of nine numbers. Now, ideally, if I were doing an, an actual game I would, on a grid, I would of course want to have a two-dimensionally two-dimensional list or array or something like this. But in this case, I I'm realizing of course that I don't have the time to, to do this, and I can easily um, um, f basically hard code everything there. So now I can actually check, um, and you can see that. I, I'm showing nothing when the the tile says zero. I am showing X when it's one and O when it's two. I think you can guess what I'm going with. And now I'm allowing to the player to actually interact with the game by adding an inkwell that says the tiles equals uh, tiles equals one. Tiles I equal equals one. And 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 now I I tried it and it shows that yes it, it works the player can actually add axis on on this and so now we're going to uh, like program the AI the AI is basically the, the the major problem of this the game because we already have the UI it's it's terrible it looks bad but it's it's there so the AI first needs to wait for some duration and this is completely just for the feel of it if you if you start, if you, if your AI 
uh, responds too early, it doesn't look like an AI. It looks looks fake. So you have to, and this is actually true. Like even if if in in normal games, uh, you can trust me. I'm a, I'm a game developer in part, and the, uh, like like some games could work much faster, but they still give that little amount of time so that it looks more like you're playing against an opponent instead of um, playing against the computer that could immediately respond, right? Cool, so the AI needs to uh, go through the playing field. Now I think you already know what's, what's going on. This, it's, it's tic-tac-toe. It's a uh, tic-tac-toe with where you can play with the AI. And uh, tic-tac-toe has a grid of three by three tiles and you can see that I, I'm just basically hard coding that this tile is zero, one, two, you know, up to eight. And and uh, now I just go, the AI just goes through each of the tiles and it constructs a, f a future, like a, a possibility in the future um, of like what the tiles could look like. So this la one line in on line 137 is basically uh, says, copy all the the current state of the world into tiles into the the variable future and also change the tile on um, tile i change it to uh, to two which means the opponent the ai's um, tile and if this is winning we haven't implemented is winning yet but if this is a winning future then uh, assign i to to winning, which means we, we we will we know now that this particular number is is the winning number, and we should probably take it um, or tile, and also try to figure out if this uh, again change the future to if if this was taken by the player, and if it was taken by the player, and it, the player would win, then assign this to blocking, which means like uh, we should probably block this, uh, uh, the player from playing this one. Cool. All right. So, and then we, we check is winning not null? If not, then that's our move. If not, then if yes, if it's null, then try blocking. And if not, then try normal. And if, if we have a move to play, then, then, then play it. Cool. So uh, now we go with, uh, we need to implement winning actually. So uh, for that, we basically just need to check for one, two, three, four, eight different um, possibilities, right? So the fact that who is winning uh, can be either that, for, for example, I, I have a problem here that I will fix in a, in a second, but, but if tiles zero, is who, which is either one or two, is either player or the AI. If if it's uh, if that is zero, and I mean if that is who, basically if they all belong, if all these tiles belong to the the player that we're asking about, then this is a winning state, and we should return true, right? And now I'm I'm basically going and and listing all the possible ways that a player or the AI could win. So the first one is I have, we have the whole row on the, the next one and the next one. And then there is the, this diagonal and then diagonal and then the, the rows, right? So that's the eight different, different ways. And I have to use my brain now and the, my, my past self needs to use, uh, uh, his brain <laughs> to uh, to figure out which numbers should go here and you can see that I'm not that bad at it actually because I, I have everything in front of me right so I can I can kind of see like oh one two th zero one two is the front row and then from there the f it's, it's like uh, the first three rows are kind of a um, a cheat cheat sheet for me Cool. So now I have the is winning method. I actually I think I'm I already done, but I'm I'm, I'm going up to change the status so that if I am winning, if the player is winning, then it shouldn't say your move, but it should say you won. If 
the AI is winning, that it should say you lose or you lost or something like that. I don't remember exactly. And if not, then you, you we say your move. Cool. So that works. And now I'm trying to, my past self is trying to restart. And then now I'm realizing, oh, I haven't implemented that, that yet. So now I'm implementing the restart button, which basically all it does is it changes the tiles back to zero. Everything needs to be zero. And of course, this is in set state. So nine zeros. Cool. Save. And now restart should work. And now I can change things. Yeah. And you can see that the I, I was blocked by the AI. I'm basically, I'm done now. I don't know it. Yet. My past self doesn't know it yet, but I'm do done and everything works um, as I would expect. I'm just testing now. So cool. Now I'm trying to win. I'm trying to find out if I can win and, and you can see me losing. <laughs> I can't win in tic-tac-toe. I mean, I mean, I can, of course, but but uh, like I was so worried that I'm, uh, I'm missing something that I just uh, l kept losing. Uh, but I think now I will, I will understand. Yeah, oh. that yes, okay. this is how you win wow. in tic-tac-toe. Cool. And that's it. I think I, I finished before 10 minutes. I just uh, stopped it at 10. 29.48, but I'm pretty sure I was finished before. So I, I call it a success. Cool. So um, yeah, uh, wow, that, that I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, I mean, the code, of course, is, is terrible and um, just terrible. <laughs> but you know, what do you expect for 10 minutes, right? Uh, wow. All right, and it, it works, it has a restart button, uh, it um, even wins the AI, uh, you know, so so pretty, pretty cool. Um, if you're interested in some of the shortcuts that I used while I was working on this, uh, you should check out my course. I just published a course on Udemy about Android Studio shortcuts, so uh, you, could, you could check it out. And uh, if, uh, if you want to know what the other project is, I'll tell you, it's um, the other project that I didn't have the balls to do when I was at Google is trying to build a full operating system in Flutter. <laughs> I know, yes, uh, but it's less ridiculous than you think. Anyway, have fun and see you around. Oh, 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 oh,